I'm Charlie Haffey, and this is a quick look at an item analysis. In front of us, we have the spreadsheet that we've been working on, and here we have the data simplified for the 20 students in the class of Teacher Alpha for the fifth grade weather test. And below that, we have the uh, answer key, and below that, we're going to put the item analysis. The problem is, scrolling up and down, um, I find that to be a good way to lose track of things, to make an error. So I'm going to take a shortcut that makes this simpler. I'm going to highlight rows 5 through 18. Then I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to hide rows 5 through 18. The nice thing about this is everything I need is in front of me now. And when I highlight a range from H2 to H21, the hidden cells will be included. So here, I'm going to find out the occurrence of A in all the responses for question number one. That calls for a count if. So equals count if. As I start, it generates some suggestions. I can come right here to count if. And the first thing it asks me is what range do I want to look in for my item? And I'm going to select these cells here. But now if you notice, either down in the cell or in the formula bar, it says H2 to H21. And that's the range that I want. The hidden cells right, have been identified. All right, comma, and now I have to pick the criteria. I always try to reference a cell. So A, which is in G29, you could put close parentheses or just hit enter. And I know three is the correct response. We could go back and unhide those rows, but I set this up specifically. So there's three A's and 17 B's, no C's or D's, just for question one. We'll see why. I'm going to show you the mistake that I make all the time. And it's a mistake that you're going to make quite often until you finally remember, oh yeah, that old gray-haired bearded guy, uh, he said that this was a mistake I was going to make often. And you'll start to bypass the mistake. I go to three, the responses for the occurrence of A in question number one. I'm going to copy the formula down one row. So I go down to the fill handle here and copy it down, and 17 is my answer, but 16 is my result. And this is the mistake that I made. Um, if I double click on this, it shows me that the range is now H3 to H22. And if we look up here, the range has gone from uh, H2 and H21 to H3 to H22. As I moved the formula down, the um, range moved in a relative way. It moved with it. And what I need to do is to lock that range for the rows 2 through 21. So let me escape out of here. I'm going to delete this. I know what happens if I leave incorrect formulas on my spreadsheet. Double click on this. And I'm going to highlight H2 through H21. And what I need to do is to leave the column in a relative form, but lock the range of rows in an absolute format. So I have a function key and an F4. So one time I do it and I make everything absolute. That's not what I need. So I do uh, function F4 one more time. Now the columns are relative, which means as I copied this across, the references will go with it. But the 21, uh, H2 to 21, those rows are going to remain intact. So let's enter that and see what happens. Come back down here, and I'm going to copy this down. 17, I'm in business. But I still have an error to correct. So I'm going to get rid of this because it has the error in it. And let's see what it is. So if I go over here and I drag from column H to column I, I get an answer of zero for A's, but right up here you go one, two, three, four. You can see there's a bunch in there already. So double click on this, and it shows me that my reference to the criteria, which was G29 before, has moved also in a relative fashion. And now this, the formula is trying to find the number of occurrences of the number three in that range. And that's just not going to work out. So let me go back here, delete the incorrect formula. 
I want this one to look good. And I'm going to select G29. What I want now is the opposite of before. I want the column to be absolute. And I want the uh, rows to move. Now, when I'm in the A row and I'm moving along, I'm moving along the correct row. When I go down, I want the formula to be referencing G30, next row, G31. So let's do this. I have G29, function key F4. And now I have the formula set up so that the reference to the G column is absolute. It won't move. But the row is going to be in a relative format. Enter. And let me just try this out. I'm going to copy this over. I'm going to copy this over. And 15 out of the 20 occurrences for uh, A in question 2 happens to be 75%. Now I have up here the answer key is formatted in the decimal equivalent of a percent. I'm going to take care of this business first and then go back and format it like that. I like to do things in one step at a time, solve one problem at a time. So now I can just complete this all the way over. And uh, <clears throat> this works out pretty well. So for example, where is an A? So A uh, is the answer and it shows up 45% of the time. 9 is 45% of 20. I'm feeling pretty good about this. Then I click here and I'm going to copy all 20 of these formulas down. And uh, this is working out pretty well. So example here, B, um, all of the children picked B, which was the correct answer. So here's 20. Um, I'm feeling really good about this. I'm feeling really good about this. Um, we have to go back, though, and change the format. So I'm going to come back here into 3. And I'm going to have the count to if function once that gets the data and returns a value. Okay, um, I'm going to then divide that by the count in the class. So I'm going to, I've inserted my cursor. I have a um, division bar there. And I got to come over here and click on the count. Now the count I want locked up absolute in every regard. No matter where these formulas get copied to in the item analysis table, I want it to look to that cell for the count. So I click on cell F24, highlight it, and I'm going to function key F4, and I've locked both the column and the row. Don't fret. I fret the first time I saw this. Where's the zero coming from? Relax. So I come over here, I copied all the way across, and then down. And now what I want to do is I want to increase the decimals. And uh, this is good. So here, B, in question one, was referenced 85% of the time. That's good. I'll pick something else at random here. D, 80%, 80%. I'm going to highlight this just to clean it up. Go back to my format of borders. Good. I like that. Another bit of a cleaning up that we can do. We're starting to get tables and tables and tables. So I'm going to click on H23 and drag and select all the cells above the numbers of the questions. Come up here to this icon, which is Merge Cells. Now all 20 of those cells are one cell. Click on here, and this is answer key. I'm going to collect all these cells here, and I'm going to merge those. And I'm going to do uh, item analysis. You can go back and set the format. You can border whatever you like. Do it any way you like. Um, but I would suggest trying to just label your data. And uh, this item analysis, when we look at it, can tell us a great deal of information about the quality of our test, the quality of our curriculum, 
and the quality of, of our instruction. The most common question asked about this video is, how do you unhide those rows? All you need to do is come over here and click and drag from row 4 to 19. Then right click and unhide rows. Uh, you might want to center this up a little bit to see everything. You can have to really uh, change the zoom level pretty well. So now you can uh, manipulate this as you see fit.